And thank you for staying with us. Now, the Chairman Senate Committee on the Army, Senator Mohamedou Ali Ndume, has called for the disbandment of the Presidential Committee on the distribution of COVID-19 palliatives. He has also alleged that the distribution exercise is fraudulent and that most of the benefactors of the palliatives do not deserve them. This is coming a week barely after the opposition party, the PDP, alleged that the federal government is using the coronavirus pandemic as an excuse to loot Nigeria. And joining us via Skype to discuss this is Balibor Rhodes Vivo, a politician and public policy expert, and also a PDP senatorial candidate in the 2019 elections. Thank you, Mr. Balibor, for joining us. Good evening, Mr. Balibor. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. An all-progressive Congress Senator, Alun Dume, has said that the distribution of COVID-19 palliative is fraudulent and has asked for the disbandment of the presidential committee in charge of the sharing of the palliatives. Now, do you share in the same belief? Yes. Yeah. What are your Hello? thoughts on this, and do you share in a, in a sentiment? Yes, we, we, I share this. We've had um, several reports. We've had several reports had people talk about how to take pictures saying that thousand uh, of the money is taken from them and that uh, um, recently there was a report issued that national cash transfer um, it's like Lagos and Delta which um, bubble which is mind boggling find that a place like Lagos is where the lockdown has really affected People's lives and livelihoods have been forced to be locked down. There's a number of other states that have been listed from this national cash um, And also, you have the situation where a billion was apparently um, less than 70 star, and then the, it was reportedly shared by cash, and then the data. That can track it was happening. I like Badable. Badable, can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, I look Badable, can you hear me? A lot of suspicion. Hello, Badable, can you hear me? Now, we're we having, we having a st well, your, your video and your audio is pretty static. So, we're going to cut now and we'll try to reconnect with you again. Let's go for a quick break okay. and we'll come back. We'll come back with more on Plus Politics. Do stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. And Badabo still on Skype with us on Plus Politics. Hi, Badabo. Hi, good to be here. Now, okay, um, if, I, if I hear you correctly before we went on that break, you did say that you share in the sentiments of the senator for the disbandment of the presidential committee in charge of the sharing of the palliatives. Now, you want to tell us why yeah. you agree with, with him on this? Yes, I highlighted that uh, there have been several problems in um, both to light based on the sharing of the palliative in recent times. Uh, there have been reports of women that collected um, funds that came up to 20,000, and apparently they were told that they return the money and collect two money instead. Um, we saw where 50 billion was apparently shared in the space of about 72 hours without any an record of how this money was shared and how people, when the Senate um, tried to prove it's the sharing of these uh, funds that on general's, uh, the accountant general's office uh, next day. Recently, the Guardian just published that the national cash transfer is going to exempt like Lagos, Delta, and Bono states where senator that lodged the complaint is from. And you can imagine that that's very mind-boggling because a state like Lagos has its citizens actually because of this lockdown. Their finances and the economic state and their capacity to live on a day to day. Now, prior to this, to this um, statement from, from the senator, many people have argued the fact that the palliatives is not getting to the people who really deserve the palliative, that the lower rung are not getting these palliatives. Um, this has been yeah. a concern of most Nigerians. 
Now, does this come as a surprise to you? And do you see any element of truth in it? No, it is true. It is definitely true. I can myself. I know people reach out to me on a daily basis and cannot feed their family, cannot teach themselves. If these parties were getting down, not be getting this amount on politicians and the, the fact of the matter is that for corruption and for sharing in this um, in this pandemic has been seen, especially with the people that are supposed to be the guardians of this resource sharing. And a lot more transparency needs to be brought into the system. Now, the presidency has come out to respond to Senator Mohamed um, Ali Ndome asking him to actually name names of those who he's allegedly are stealing the money meant for the palliatives. But we know that most times when allegations like this are made, statements like this are made, hardly names are mentioned. Now, how do we begin to handle the situation? Given the times we're in, this is a pandemic, and we do not expect such to be coming up at this point in time. So what should be done in this situation? Exactly. The burden of proof is not on Senator Jumez, on the federal government. Who has a social construct? Who has a social contract with we, the citizens? Based on that social contract, they tell us to obey lockdown, and we obey the lockdown. So it's on them to show accountability and transparency. It's not on Saint Andume to have to list or prove evidence. They should show accountability. They should report, have an outlet or a platform that shows how these monies are shared that shows empathy and shows that they actually understand um, the actual effects, socioeconomic effects that this lockdown is having on people in the different geographical regions, and that these palliatives are responding to that, not just an arbitrary um, desire to just give money, which seems like wealth is being transferred from the people that generate the money for the country, which is the Delta states of the world, of Nigeria, the Lagos states, to the Northwest, getting the majority of this national cash transfer. The, the federal government, the onus is on them to show clearly how this is a strategic and intelligent policy distribution system. Also, interestingly, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management has declared that it will focus on the urban poor, uh, national social register, as well as bank verification number, the BVN, to determine who benefits from the distribution palliatives, just to cushion the biting effect of COVID-19 on Nigerians. Now, do you believe this is a wise decision, especially with our lack of data in Nigeria and also illiteracy being one of our biggest problems? Bear in mind that many of those who need these palliatives are the poor who mostly don't even have access to these initiatives, like most of them have bank accounts, and they might end up not being yes. captured in the NSR. Yes. Um, listen, I, I feel that, yes, it is very important to focus on the urban poor and a system that creates accountability, even understanding the fact that a lot of these people don't have BVNs, a lot of them don't have accounts. We need to create a tailor-made system that will address these issues. That is one. The second thing is, palliatives can also come in terms of subsidizing electricity charges. That is a very clean and neat way to get relief to people that are on lockdown and still at home. Palliatives can also come in, in, in relation to providing free fertilizers to the rural um, farmers who are not affected by the lockdown but we will then increase our productivity in terms of agricultural foods that can then come down to the urban centers that actually consume most of these foods at a cheaper price. Palliatives can come in various ways. In Ghana, for instance, there is free supply of electricity to, cushion the, the, to provide relief to people on lockdown. Another thing is that we also should look for how to jumpstart our economy again. We cannot just copy and paste what they are doing in England and America where we don't have a social, a social safety net. We need to try and see how we can get people to work, engage our youth population. There are so many projects that are happening in Lagos State now, and all the roads are free. This is the time to finish a lot of this construction work. This is the time to get the gutters. This is the time to do engage as much manual labor as possible in a strategic and intelligent way where people are protected by constantly wearing their masks, 
wearing their gloves, if there is a system of movement that allows them to get to these sites, it will be disinfected properly as we see being done in China. We need to employ a more strategic and intelligent approach to this. We cannot just shut the entire state down and it coming down because we are copying what happened in England and America. When those citizens have access to credit cards that they can pay over time, have access to mortgages and the government is actually transferring um, policies directly to their accounts because most of them are banked and they have accounts. Yeah. Now, interestingly, days ago, the, the opposition party, the PDP, alleged um, that the federal government is using um, this policy, the distribution of this policy to embezzle Nigerians. And now we have a sitting senator, a seventh senator in, a, in the ruling party, the All Progressive Congress, also calling for the disbandment of this committee. What exactly is going on here? I mean, are we losing focus of something very pivotal? If the opposition party and a sitting seventh senator in the ruling party seem to be saying the same thing about these palliatives. What exactly are we, are we, should we be focusing on here? So, you know, the thing is that we have a lot of people that are opportunists. Regardless of how many people are getting sick, are dying, these people are looking for ways to en um, enrich themselves. And the people need to actually remember this because, you see, a lot of Nigerians don't have a long memory. And we need to remember this and hold these people accountable when it's time to the next elections. If the opposition party and the ruling party say something, then there is no smoke without fire. It has to be looked into. And it's also um, the fault of the government who is supposed to be showing us what they are doing with these funds and transparently letting people know so we can have confidence in the system again, even though people are sacrificing by staying at home. Are good, we should not be in this process where people don't know how they are going to feed the next day. Be worried that the people that are in charge of their well being are actually embezzling money. It goes against the social contract, democracy. Balabal Rhodes Vivo, we want to thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your great contribution. Thank you, thank you for having me. And thank you for staying with us. Up next is our Plus Report. And when we return, my take. Stay with us. Exactly one week after the headquarters of the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation was gutted by fire, there has been another fire outbreak at the headquarters of the Corporate Affairs Commission. The fire occurred on Wednesday morning at the seven-story building located in Maitama, Abuja. At about 10.20 hours this morning, some of our critical staff were around because we have our servers running 24-7. There was a power surge which affected one of the split air conditioners, the outer duct of the AC, and it caught fire. The few personnel and the electricians that were around mobilized using the fire house reel and the fire extinguishers, they quenched the fire. But unfortunately, through the outer duct, the fire had descended to the fourth and fifth floor through the fire duct. And because of the height, they couldn't mobilize enough resources to quench it. So we had to invite the fire service, and they came almost immediately. You've seen the place, and they were able to contain it. It didn't affect any of our records. The only thing affected was that unit, that one unit of two horsepower air conditioner. We have already restored light in these premises. We are restarting our servers, and uh, we have uh, our personnel. Since the lockdown, we have critical personnel within the building, particularly our plumbers, our electricians, and some few staff that needed to keep our servers up and running. Because despite the lockdown, our staff are still working from home. We still render registration services from the comfort of our homes. So these servers have to be up and running. And this is my take. A lot of times, the government is blamed for most of the issues in the country. But when the government takes steps to solve these issues and the citizens are normally going against these steps, it makes these individuals irresponsible and the cause for the consequences which will be visited on other citizens. 
Many times, the people who are referred to as prominent and rich are guilty of flouting orders and the poor are made to suffer. Well, this is a health issue and as much as your arguments will say that government hospitals are not the best, in this case, they are most likely your best chance in healing from this virus. Now, to tell the truth and do what is required of you, and if your irresponsibility makes a mockery of you, do not blame the government. And as much as I do believe that this is not the time to play politics, I do also believe that whistleblowing is not wrong at this point. Millions have been donated to the Nigerian government, and until now, we do not know what has become of it. No, we're not saying it has been embezzled. But we're siding with the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, to ask for transparency and accountability in the handling of these monies. It has always been wrong to steal the money of the masses, but now it will be callous and inhumane to steal money meant to fight for the life of the people and economy of Nigeria. Do not fall into temptation. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for being with us all through this week. Plus Politics returns on Monday, same time. Until then, stay safe and be well.